There's been an arrest in the savage killing of a woman in Orange County, California, whose dead body was found in an alleyway. We bring on retired CIA and FBI agent Tracy Walder to discuss the investigation and potential motive. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. There has been an arrest in connection with a killing out in Orange County, California, that absolutely shook this community. 26-year-old Dino Rojas Moreno was arrested on suspicion of murder of 27-year-old Tatum Goodwin. Her body was found dead in an alleyway between an old movie theater and a restaurant called Carmelita's. This is actually where Tatum worked as an assistant manager. Police said that it was a construction worker that found her body. Friends told local news outlets in Southern California that after work on Saturday, Goodwin went to nearby Hennessy's Tavern and then later to Marine Bar for drinks after her shift. The Tavern actually posted a tribute and plea for information on their Instagram page before Moreno's arrest. Reports are that there was trauma to Goodwin's body that was consistent with a homicide and that she was badly beat. Right now, there's no connection between Moreno and Tatum that's been identified by law enforcement or even where he is from. But I do want to talk a little bit more about this. So let me bring in right now former CIA and FBI agent, national security contributor at News Nation, and author of The Unexpected Spy, Tracy Walder. Tracy, so good to have you here. Thanks for coming back here on Sidebar. Thank you for having me, Jesse. I appreciate it. Now, first, my understanding is you grew up in the OC. You know this area. Yes. So I'm from the next city over, which is called Irvine. Um, this this area is, as you mentioned, is very close knit, particularly around this boulevard or this this block. The restaurant she worked at was was basically four um business is down from this bar. I grew up going to this bar uh, back in my college days. Look, no place is obviously completely safe or foolproof, um, you know, from murder. But this type of crime typically doesn't happen there. You're, you're mostly seeing kind of felonious burglaries, those kinds of things, not murder. And is that because, A, the community, or is it B, you know, for people who don't know the geography, it would have been very hard to commit an open murder like this in that area? So basically this is really close to PCH or Pacific Coast Highways. It's it's right off of that. There's really just like one main road kind of in and out. It's not remote by any by any stretch. It's just an area that I feel like you would have to know. Um, this isn't an area that you would necessarily go prowling, right, for, for someone. And I think that's probably what is upsetting this community the most is that they may feel that it could have been one of them I don't know if that's true or not, um, but this is not an area that is heavily trafficked. It's an area that is heavily trafficked by locals. And I should tell you that when law enforcement made this arrest, they came out and said there's no more danger to the community, that this was an isolated incident. I'll get to that in a minute. I just want to understand a little bit more about the geography. The fact that she was killed and her body was in this alley um, and it was discovered by a construction worker it just feels like such an, a blatant open crime in an urban area that I, I, I've been there before. I can't understand how it would have been committed um, without some sort of eyewitness or some sort of surveillance footage. And, you know, he was apprehended relatively quickly. It just feels like if you were to do this, um, it, it feels so blatant and in the open. I think that there, the reason they probably caught him so quickly, my gut says that there was surveillance footage. That theater where around where her body was found has been under construction for a while, um, but I do know that there are cameras back there, and I think that's part of how he was caught um, so quickly, which is obviously a good thing. Now, as you mentioned, yes, it's a populated area, so would people be hearing screams and those kinds of things? Perhaps. It's hard to say where this is, is not necessarily in the middle of like a residential neighborhood. You do have a restaurant, you do have a couple bars around there. And so my guess is, sadly, I'm not sure that people were necessarily cognizant or paying attention to what was going on. But yes, I mean, I literally this summer dropped my daughter off across the street. At, there's a gas station there for um, her bus for camp to come pick her up. So this is a very um, trafficked area, but it also depends on the time. I think if this is something that was occurring at one or two in the morning, the rest of the neighborhood is probably asleep. It's not that kind of a neighborhood. This area, though, is probably very much alive. Hennessy's is, is quite popular. 
You know the phrase, work hard, play hard? Pretty easy to say, but you know how you feel after a big night out. It's not so easy to bounce back, right? Especially as you're getting older. And you need to because you always have a lot to do the next day. Well, Zbiotics is the sponsor of this video, and this is something that can really help tackle those rough mornings after drinking. This is a pre alcohol probiotic that is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It's been invented by PhD scientists. And what it does is when you drink, Alcohol gets converted into this toxic byproduct in the gut. That's actually what causes the hangover, not dehydration. But Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break that byproduct down. So drinking Zbiotics before drinking alcohol, responsibly, of course, can make a world of difference for how you feel the next day at that workout class or at your job or even when you're spending time with family and friends. You can go to zbiotics.com slash sidebar to get 15% off of your first order when you use Sidebar Checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter what the time is, no matter what the occasion. And Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're not happy for whatever reason, they're going to refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash sidebar and use the code Sidebar Checkout for 15% off. For me, I'm looking at it more from the suspect's angle, right? In the sense, like, mm-hmm. not other people seeing it, but for him, to, if he did this, right, and, and the idea here is that she was possibly beaten badly, for him to have the hubris to do this at that moment, in that alleyway, I mean, I don't know how this all went down. I don't know where this went down, but it just seems to me that tells you something about the suspect, tells you something about the killer. My guess is, and I I was trying to refrain from making this assumption because we just don't know, but this is an assumption from just my perspective. I think that he may have known her and known her movements um, and what she was doing that night. Um, I don't know if this was a stalking incident, especially when the police have come out and said that there is no more danger to the public. Um, That tells me also kind of through veiled messaging that this may have been an issue between the two of them or what he perceived to be the two of them. And this is something she was targeted, unfortunately. That's that's what isolated incident means to you? To me, yes. So she worked worked at that restaurant, uh, Carmelita's. She went to Hennessy's. What can you tell us about those two locations? Uh, they're popular. I mean, I'm not not overly so. We're not looking at like fancy, you know, locations. We're looking at like kind of local, college type, you know, early 20s uh, kind of locations, particularly Hennessy's. Uh, my friend's family owns the bar, so that's just why I know a lot about it. Um, you know, it's a local tavern sort of situation. There's kind of chains of them. It would make complete sense that she would kind of get off her shift at work and then go there to unwind. It literally is right down the street. And so that's what tells me that perhaps he was watching her and knew what her movements were going to be like, and then was able to isolate her in that that back alley. That's what this tells me. The fact that uh, at this point in time, at the time of this recording, law enforcement hasn't provided more details about his arrest, the connection between him and Tatum, the uh, circumstances, what evidence they have, that's not surprising to you, right? No, it's not surprising to me. I think part of it, too, is they're obviously looking at building a case. You have digital evidence. They have two different priorities, right? The first one was to capture the individual. And so that's where they put all of their resources for that, What you know, couple day period of time um, was into that, looking through the CCTV, looking through her cell phone records, all of those things. That's what they were focused on. The second piece now, as you know, is building the case. And so I do think that's perhaps when we will start to see more information come out, but they had to acquire enough evidence really to hold him. And that was really their job and priority number one. So it's not surprising that this hasn't come out. Yeah. And again, I think at the time, of this recording he hasn't officially been charged with the crime he's been arrested on suspicion of the crime i do want to ask you about how do you think this happened behind the scenes so laguna beach police chief uh, jeff calvert released a statement saying uh, this arrest was the result of outstanding police work by our investigations team that worked tirelessly with our law enforcement partners to bring justice to tatum goodwin and her family and then we also know that the newport beach and Anaheim police assisted in this arrest. Seems like multiple agencies working together. What do you think happened there? 
Um, well, so when I was an FBI agent, I worked in the Orange County kind of field office. And one thing I will say is about those local police departments, the cities are so close together. They actually work really, really well together. They are some of the best in terms of communicating um, amongst each other. I will say that about the local police there. Laguna Beach um, doesn't have a lot of violent crime. It is a smaller police uh, station, as is Newport Beach as well. Anaheim is obviously the bigger of the two. It's a more crime ridden city. But the issue is, is what I think went on is that's how they were tracking this individual. He had either was working in Anaheim, maybe lived in Newport or vice versa. And I think they were all working together um, to try to uh, capture him wherever they did. But these these police departments, particularly in South Orange County, are excellent at working together. And, it, and like you said, I think they're building a case because they are also asking for anybody with information to contact them. They say you can contact the Laguna Beach uh, detective Tanner Flagstag at 949-497-0369. They also provide his email address. Anonymous tips can be sent to Orange County Crime Stoppers at 1-855-TIP-OCCS. What do investigators need from the public? I think what they're looking for is the connection between the two. Um, what was that relationship like between the two of them? Uh, she may, obviously, they're clearly you know, serving warrants to get cell phone, digital cell phone data, I'm sure, but that's going to take a little bit. It doesn't happen overnight. And so what I think they're trying to hope is that her friends, family members, anonymous people may come forward and talk about, you know, did they, she have a relationship with this individual so that they can start possibly charging him, um, you know, with this murder and building that case around it. I think that's kind of issue number one that they're looking for. The fact that she, again, if the reports are accurate, that she was badly beaten, in your experience, those kind of crimes, that way, uh, that form of homicide, what does that tell you? Personal. That's what that tells me. Sorry to be so, you know, quick no. in my answer. But again, that's another reason I do think that she was targeted. One was kind of reading between the lines, right, um, of what the police chief was saying about no more threat to the public, but then also the method in which she was killed to me um, indicates that this was a crime of personal passion, typically in burglaries, when someone's setting out, right, to rob a woman of their purse or, you know, uh, uh, carjack someone, it, those are gonna be mostly committed with guns, right? It's, a, it's not a personal crime, although it feels that way, it's not. Um, and so I think when you're looking at a beating, stabbing, strangulation, those kinds of things really do indicate rage um, and, and personal. I will tell you, it, it seems to me also that it could indicate, again, if he did this, he might not have had the means. So it, it surprises me one of the ways where the body was left off. Maybe he didn't have a car to transport the body to another location. Maybe he didn't have tools to dispose of the body like we see in so many of these cases. He didn't. It doesn't appear that it was a gunshot or even a knife wound. And, and, and doesn't that tell you something that perhaps, again, he's the suspect here, but does it not tell you that perhaps he didn't have the means to uh, not only kill her a certain way, but also dispose of her body so he wouldn't be detected? I mean, again, depositing her body in an alleyway where she could easily be found, that says something. Right. And not to be, I, I sure, I do not mean this to sound insensitive in any way, shape or form, but literally across the street is the ocean. So it would be a very easy way to, I guess, dispose of a body. I'm not trying to give anyone any ideas, but, but that also tells me more about the, perhaps the nature of the crime. I think you bring up a very good point in that whatever a murder weapon may be here may have been uh, a murder weapon of opportunity, if you will, whatever was around um, to, to beat her with. And so that then would go towards intent, right? Did he come there with the intent to kill her or not? Was this a dispute uh, between the two of them that then escalated right into something like that? I think that that is a very good point that you raise and does kind of raise an issue of did he intend uh, to come there to kill her or was this some kind of a fight? His uh, bail has been set at $1 million. Um, and I also want to leave everybody with kind of understanding Going back to the victim here, Tatum Goodwin. So, you know, this arrest happened on the same day that dozens of people had gathered for this memorial for her at the San Clemente Pier. Um, and I believe it was her sister, Haley Goodwin Tino, who said, I'm sorry I wasn't there to protect her, that she didn't deserve this. And uh, Tatum's mother, uh, Stacy Goodwin Patino, said she was just a happy-go-lucky person that would give you the shirt off of her back that back, that's who Tatum was. My understanding is that there was a GoFundMe that was set up 
by the restaurant that has already raised more than $24,000 to help the family. Just leaving this on the emotional impact um, here, Tracy, the, the victim here, because we always talk so much about the suspect and why this happened, but the victim here, you talked about this community, you talk about how this doesn't happen. She was in the prime of her life. It's just really, really so heartbreaking to think about. I think it's very heartbreaking to think about because it literally could be any of us. This was a woman who was an assistant manager at a restaurant doing the very best she could to be successful in life and to be a responsible human and to be a good person. It sounds like she was a very, very good person. And to have the ultimate happen to her in such a disgraceful way is is absolutely heartbreaking. It is. And I'd like to continue to follow the case to understand the why of this and understand more details as it comes forward. Uh, I think that's important. But listen, Tracy Walder, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate your insight as always. Thank you for having me. And that's all we have for you right now here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.